About two years ago, I started the process of turning my eight and a half by 24 foot cargo trailer into a fully functional RV. Now at the time, it took me a few weeks to get lighting and get a kitchen in place. We took it on a trip and then I was thinking down the road, I'll end up doing something. Well, all of a sudden what ended up happening was that we had a trip that we wanted to go on. And so we converted it quickly, we built it out and we made it fully functioning for a month long road trip. So what I wanted to do was take time to go through and talk about that process and talk about the things that I did. I'm a perfectionist, so I see things that are all but finished like there are so many things that still need to be done and if you've ever done any project you see all those things but somebody else looks at it and thinks that it looks perfect so i've been hesitant to post anything because it's not done but what i did was i started out on the outside here I installed propane tanks and I actually piped those in, plumbed those into the stove, which is right up front. You'll see that in a moment. And then there are two batteries. There's battery on either side of the propane tanks. And this is where I run my power. I'm actually in the process uh, right now of changing it from two 12 volt batteries to two six volt go-kart batteries that will be run in sequence. And so I'll get a little bit better voltage. I'll get a little bit better power out of that. And so uh, super excited about that. Um, there are a few things that need to be done there, and that is my up one of my big upgrades for this year. The other thing you can kind of see is you can see that there is a roof rack up there, and I put an aluminum roof rack. Those bars are six feet apart. I can put paddle boards up on them. If I was going to do it again, I probably would put them a little bit closer um, because the paddle boards are not quite long enough to span a six foot bar gap and so i would actually put them a little bit closer probably closer to four feet and uh, they just there's no reason to have them at six so let's go inside and i'll show you what i have done welcome inside so this is the eight and a half by 24 foot cargo trailer which is generally bigger than most people will go with but i wanted space my problem with toy haulers is that they don't have enough space for all the toys that you need we're a four person family and we needed space to have um quads down the road we've got uh, younger kids now that don't have their own machines but at some point they will also we go to the sand dunes we go and play we go on trips with friends and so generally people have an extra machine that they need us to take and it's always nice to be able to do that instead of saying now we just don't have space for it. you just can't take it or you have to find your own vehicle but being able to allow somebody to throw something in or somebody may have a vehicle that breaks down and um, it's always nice to have a little bit of extra space last year um, we went on a trip and I got four quads and a dirt bike inside of the cargo trailer with everything built in that I'm about to show you. So let's start up front. This is the kitchen. The kitchen is the, was the first thing to go in. Now what I did was I ended up actually putting in uh, Home Depot cabinets. I went to Home Depot, I got those. They're heavy, they are heavy and they're right up on the tongue. There's a lot of weight up there, um, but it actually balances out and I'll show you why in a moment. Um, but what I did is I have my refrigerator. My refrigerator actually came out of my pop-up camper that uh, had a roof malfunction on the road. The roof flew off of it. So less of a malfunction and more of a total failure. Anyway, uh, this refrigerator is a three-way, so it runs off of AC, DC, and propane. And so it's a, an incredible feature. Not a lot of refrigerators have that. If you have to actually go out and purchase that, it's kind of a hefty price tag, but um, worth it because if you're off the grid, if you're uh, boondocking, then it's going to be a whole lot easier to run your refrigerator and keep things cold. Um, so there's cabinetry here. And then over here is where I installed my converter. And so uh, this is where the power runs in from the outside. There's a 30 amp short plug on the outside and uh, that runs into here. This converts everything to DC um, it'll, and allows me to also run my AC as well. And so I've got fuses in here for everything that's AC. I've got the breakers here for everything that is DC running on the walls. And then I have this cool little plug, um, this little box right here that I have installed a lot of my switches into. What I've done here is this is for the refrigerator. So if I want to uh, run the, the refrigerator on AC, I flip that switch. If I want to uh, run the fresh water pump, that's right here. Um, I've got a tank underneath the sink and then I've got forward cabinet lights which are essential. 
The main cabinet lights were always intended to be a master switch for everything. That never happened. Having them on individual switches actually ended up being a little bit better. Um, right below, essential uh, carbon monoxide detector and ended up putting in a sink from Home Depot, just a, a really cheap, inexpensive um, single basin sink. The stove is an RV stove and that works really well. So the downside to the stove is that I don't have a hood vent and I understand that. However, I put the max air right above it. And so you can see this, I love having the max air because it can stay open, it has a fan in it, it can stay open while you're on the road. But it also, I think it acts as a hood vent. It's not quite as efficient, but it does the job. And so that works really well. Um, we've got the cabinets and the cabinets all have latches built in and I'm really happy with those. So over here, I'll go over here. This is the, the living room, the, the TV. And which I don't really need. Um, we had the TV and we decided to put it up on the wall. Don't use it that often, but with kids, it's kind of nice. Then I've got the fold up table. And so what that has uh, underneath it is one by two legs. And then it's got hinges um, that break down and it'll actually keep itself up, but I wouldn't actually trust it to put any weight on it. Got the essential crazy beaver shovel right inside the door here. That is a must. And then if you go to Home Depot, you can actually get these cool brackets that are uh, quick releases. So you've got like the quick fist um, uh, brackets and attachments. But if you go to Home Depot, I think these are like two fifty, three bucks a piece, um, maybe five dollars. I can't remember. Uh, but you just pull. Pretty sweet. When I ran power from the converter, I ran it across the the nose and then up and then down the wall. And you can see that I have some conduit that's bent back there. You can see that I put outlets and uh, I'm actually really excited about those, really pleased with the way th those came out. One of the projects that's left to do is run DC on this back wall, which is what I'm gonna show you now. I've got a toolbox up there that can come out of the trailer when we get somewhere that keeps all sorts of things in it. It's always nice to have some extra storage because it's not an RV and it's not built out with something like a dinette with its um, or with a lot of cabinetry, then you don't have as many places and you know little storage spots for things. And so having that is great. Here's the couch. We got this uh, fold up toy hauler couch that folds up and then I built cabinetry to run around the couch when everything's folded up. And then I built these, um, these cabinets are about 24 by 12 um, on the sides. Uh, so right there about 24 by 12. These ones are about 24 by 12. And then I can keep helmets up there. So this section is generally where helmets sit and then gear can sit up top. I've got these tubs, um, these Husky tubs from Home Depot work really well. And then the Pelican case actually fits really well. So this is a 1535 Air and it fits perfect. And then right next to the couch, I actually have the wheel well, which I put chairs onto. I've got some hooks that keep the chairs bungee to the wall, um, trying to keep it so that it's ready to go at any time. And so uh, no matter when we wanna pack up and head out, we can do that. Um, also on this wheel well, which is the actually the driver's side of the truck, we've got a mirror right here. You're not ever supposed to see your camera. So like as a filmmaker, you're not supposed to be able to see the camera in the shot, but uh, we're in a mirror. And so anyway, get over it, you're fine. We've got these cabinets. These are actually shoe cabinets from Ikea and they're, they fit right up against the wall. And then we use them as toy boxes for the kids' toys. And so they're really easy. They fold up against the wall, they hang on the wall, they mount there, they don't ever move around, which is awesome. And then this thing is so, super sweet. It's a closet bar. It goes into the e-track hooks and just stays mounted on the wall. It's got a little bit of play, but everything e-track does, but it won't actually fall out. On the opposite side of the trailer, the bunks are designed as toddler beds. They're not twins. So if the kids get bigger, which inevitably they will, um, I will actually have to figure out a different solution or build out a different trailer. So we'll figure that out when we get there. They're both at a two by four frame and then one by four slats on the bottom side and then there's just paneling and then I actually have hooks on them so I can bungee things right to that bed and then when they fold down 
Um, they actually work really well and we've actually got some tents. We've got a, an ice cream truck for my daughter and a fire truck for my son and uh, the, that actually acts as their room. It's those pop-up tents that you throw out and they go poof. And you throw and they go poof. Those are sweet because they're rectangular. They're a rectangular cube. Rectubular? Rectubular. I'm taking that. And so it actually creates rooms for both of them so that they, it's kind of like they have their own room, which is pretty awesome. And so it provides some shade so that they can, even if the lights are on, even if um, I'm still awake, then they can go to sleep and um, actually get some rest. And it's actually fairly dark in there. So that's awesome. That works really well. So now we're on the back of the trailer, which is where the bed is. And it's a queen size bed up on top. Um, it's at, mounted at 48 inches above the floor height and I designed it so that way so that I didn't have to weld a frame at the time I actually didn't even have time to weld a frame or figure something out that could be uh, lifted up and to build a wooden frame I felt like it was going to be too heavy and so uh, what I ended up doing was just putting plywood I've got some L brackets I've got a few uh, joists on there that work really well they're just wood joists but there's not nearly as many of them as if i would have built a frame that could actually lift up to the ceiling so at some point that would be awesome to do i built it at 48 inches so that i could roll the quads underneath the bed from the back wall uh, from the back door that folds down and i could actually roll those in here if i need to if there's only two quads they fit under the bed that stays if the quads aren't in there that's actually great there's a closet bar underneath there i just used some conduit with some pipe straps and i mounted it up to underneath the bed and so we can use that as a closet space it also works great for storing bicycles and uh, long boards whatever you want to take with you and it works great when you're at your location as a uh, basically a playroom for kids 48 inches off the ground and then or off of the floor and then the quads can go in underneath it holds two quads really well and then the generator sits here. It does not have a home, but it comes out anytime we get to our location and doesn't stay in here. Up against the wall, I've got some hooks and I use bungees to mount the canopies along the side. Um, use the wheel well as a shelf, get those up off the floor, and then you can put anything in that you need to. Here's also a curtain to divide, kind of create some sort of a bedroom changing area and uh, to just use a little bit of blackout curtain to um, darken that space if needed. There's also another max air vent right here and that works really well we'll actually turn the fans to run opposite directions and so it actually creates fantastic airflow because if you notice one of the things that i don't yet have is any windows in the trailer and so um, that is one of the next projects very soon and i'm looking to put some some windows in very excited about it but at this point we just don't have that cross breeze we actually did a vinyl click plank flooring now if you're going to do this yourself what i would advise you to do is stay away from vinyl click plank and here's why it moves and also the heat messes with it the hot the cold it expands and contracts and so i've actually got gaps along the floor i went with a cheap vinyl click plank i thought hey this will look great it'll work great it'll seal it does seal except there's some cracks now because the the swelling and then uh it has cooled down and it's contracted and it doesn't click back in place like it should so i actually have some gaps that need to be sealed um, with some sort of a vinyl or a caulking or something but it just doesn't look as pretty also the flooring has cracked a little bit it's shifted because you're driving down the road and that's just what happens so if you're doing it yourself i would advise staying away from vinyl click plank flooring at the time, it was actually cheaper than buying linoleum. And the reason is because I wanted linoleum to be all one piece, and I would have actually had to buy a 12, or it's 12 foot, 12 feet wide. Linoleum would be 12 feet wide, and I would have wanted it one piece, so I would have had to buy a 12 foot by 24 foot section. I would have ended up having a four foot by 24 foot section that would not have been used. I could have had a seam in the middle, that didn't seem as practical, so I went with the vinyl click plank and I regretted that. So I would not suggest that. Before I forget, I will say this little thing over here has, you open it up and I actually have USB ports and I have a 12 volt outlet. So there's also my voltage meter right here. And then there's a 12 volt outlet, which is great. And then this stuff, as you can tell, is just a shelf for little things, um, whether it's toiletry things, um, 
a speaker, which is essential, and then a bar to hold coffee cups, which is awesome. One of the other projects that is not yet done is the insulation of the roof. Having a cargo trailer that is not insulated is not ideal. It's not great for all of those circumstances. So if you're looking to do something and you're wanting to build something out, if I was going to do something again, what I would do is start by taking all of the paneling off the wall. And sometimes that's really difficult to do because a lot of times you start a project when you need a project done and so it takes a lot more time there's a lot more required uh, there's a lot of patience involved but i would if i was going to do it again i would go and get a brand new trailer or if i was buying a used one i'd take all the panels off the wall all the plywood off the wall and i would put foam insulation the the purple stuff and get some thin stuff then put some then put some wood paneling over the ceiling and that's probably the direction that I would go. If there's any questions that you have, feel free to ask, feel free to subscribe to this, and I'm gonna post some other update videos, but I just wanted to, after two years, I don't feel like it's done yet, but I did want to have something to share with people because I've been asked a lot about what I did inside of this trailer and the way that I made it work. And so feel free to ask questions, drop questions in the comments, and I will try to respond to those. I can also make a video showing some of the different things that we found and so there's a lot of fun stuff this has been a really cool project and it's not done yet there's actually some things happening in the next few weeks that i'm looking forward to and really excited to update you on so hope you like it hope you enjoyed it i've had a ton of fun with it and we'll see you on the upgrade side of this project. See ya. Oh, before I go, I will show you what I did on the outside because I installed some lights because I wanted to have a ton of exterior light in case I ever needed it, whether it's to work on a vehicle or work on projects or just be able to see, just be able to hang out around the fire and have some lights. So here's what I did. I installed another switch panel which runs my exterior lights and I don't have labels up here, but I know what they mean. And so I have, I also have um, USB, USB and 12 volt. I've got these switches for the LED exterior lights, which I mounted onto the back of the trailer and the left and the right of the trailer. I didn't put any on the front, which I will at some point, um, but for right now, it's just LED work lights on the back and sides. I use the, the, the rack up top in order to do that. So, wow, it's bright. So you can see on that ladder rack that I've got some LED work lights and they're turned on, but it's super bright out. So it's hard to actually see them, but those are what I installed on this side. And then I also installed them on the other side as well. I put them up there, which you can see, and those work great. They cast a ton of light. It's almost too bright if you're hanging around the fire. And, but if you need some work light, it is perfect. And then I put some on the back door of the trailer as well. And so all the wires run right inside. I use caulking and ran that inside. So nothing leaks, everything works great. And I've got lights everywhere except the front and that will happen. So hope you enjoyed it. See you later.